Hey everybody, this is Justin out at the workshop and today I'm going to show you how to turn a U.S. medium uh, Alice pack uh, in its off-frame configuration into an even more compact, lightweight assault pack. So let's take a step into the workshop. Okay, so what we have here is the very versatile uh, U.S. issue medium Alice on the frame. So it can be on the frame or off the frame, so first thing right off the bat, you know, we'll take it and uh, go ahead and remove it from the frame and put your frame aside and then attach your straps as you would for regular independent carry off the frame. Uh, I've just gone ahead and done that right here. So next thing you want to do, next thing I want to show you, what we're going to build this When you first look inside, you get a big main compartment and then you've got obviously the radio pouch. Now on the bottom of the radio pouch you've got these three D-rings. This set of three D-rings right along the bottom seam. Now also down at the bottom you notice you've got what appears to be 275 cord double strands sewn in to the bottom in a parallel line. Now I've heard a lot of theories about this. I, I'll admit I was equally confused years ago when I first got uh, a medium Alice. Now I'll put in a link for the uh, the Alice manual, the old one, and uh, that should enlighten you. Uh, what these are for is when you have the pack on the frame, um, you may not use all of the uh, the volume of the pack. It's certainly smaller than large Alice, uh, but even then if you're carrying a smaller amount of equipment, what these are meant for is tying together and actually collapsing the pack in. So they're kind of like tension um, cords. Uh, you might see on newer packs that are, you know, maybe bungee material with uh, cord locks. And what it can do is kind of draw the pack in and squish it down. Now, this is meant, as I said, for carrying uh, on the, uh, the frame uh, for maybe tightening it up and keeping it from wagging. But what we're going to do is we're going to build off of that in this trick uh, to turn it into an assault pack. So... What I'm going to do first off, and what you need to do, is go ahead and take these, and I want you to take the cords and go ahead and slip them in, just like here in the center, and on either side. And if you need to, go ahead and turn it inside out. But I want you to go ahead and take these, just like this, slide them all the way up, and however you want to tie it, I just like an overhand. Okay, no. so, uh, as you can see here, we've gotten all three of these tied. Uh, so once again, this is the inside of the pack. I've got it turned inside out. Normally, this is easy enough to do uh, when you're not worried about looking through a camera uh, to do just by looking down inside your pack. So once again, here's the radio pocket. And then here are the uh, D-rings right here. And what we've done is we've tried to pull the cords as tight as possible up to the D-rings. Okay, now I've got the pack turned right side out. Now... Obviously, if you had this on the frame, the whole point, you've now tied uh, that line of uh, lines up to the D-rings. Um, you can see, <clears throat> as, I, as I said before, the bottom of the pack wants to do this. It's doing an accordion um, so that it's now tightening up the available space inside uh, the uh, cargo area there. And what you want to go ahead and do is turn that over so that the back's facing you. Go ahead and get your straps out of the way here. So obviously your back is going to be against this side. And you got the padded envelope there. Now what you want to do is take this bottom. Like I said, it's kind of doing this accordion thing. You want to take this where it's formed a flap. And you want to go ahead and fold that back over. Now at this point, optionally, you can take a piece of cardboard. Or you can take like maybe some rigid plastic like a, a lot of assault packs. You can go ahead and put that in there, um, whatever material, and you certainly don't need to. Um, that's optional, but if you want to add some extra rigidity there, you can do that, and it keeps your, uh, your straps under something. Um, so when you fold this over, what you're ending up getting is the bottom of the pack is actually forming kind of another padded surface for your back. Um, so you go ahead and fold that over. Now... What you have here is 
you've got your frame tie downs that would normally wrap around the bottom of the Alice frame and you know they'll go around the post a couple times and then they'll go through this. Now when they're like so you can see they're kind of covered up but these line up perfectly with this web hanger here uh, on the side of the pack. So what you want to do is go ahead and take that strap on both sides and pass that through just like that. Now take the attachment point buckle and go ahead and do it normally as if you were going through the frame. But instead it's going around itself. Go ahead and get that nice and tight. Take the strap, extra strap, and go ahead and just put that right back through the loop. And then go ahead and you can tuck the buckle in there too. And you can grab it from the opposite side and you can pull it real tight. So there's that. And the same thing over here. The tie down strap to the frame is now up in the middle. There's the buckle. Here's the sideways hanger on the middle of the compartment outside. Once again, just go ahead, pass that strap through there, just like that. Get it nice and tight. Kind of turn this buckle. Doesn't need to move too much sideways. It's almost perfectly parallel. Just make sure it's straight and going that correct direction. Don't get it twisted around. Once again, just go ahead and tighten that up as best you can. And then tuck it through the web hanger reaching on the inside. Pull it through and go ahead and just tuck the buckle away in there as well. So Okay, so here we have the finished product. Uh, you can see it's about half of the volume that the medium Alice would normally be, but it's not on the frame. Um, now, you still have full access to the outer pockets. Uh, you still have access to your, uh, your flap straps and the buckles down below. You still have access, obviously, to the uh, top flap compartment uh, for maps and what have you. So I've just gone ahead and stuffed this thing f full uh, of a bunch of stuff just to show, you know, if you're using this, if you're looking to use it as more of a day pack, little patrol pack, um, or assault pack, um, and in its regular configuration, it's just, you know, too big, too big and floppy. Um, you can go ahead and fold it down half size, and uh, it still carries a ton of stuff in the much smaller configuration. Um, you know, here I've got a couple MREs um, in the bellow pockets, you know, a couple meals for while you're out. Uh, middle, you know, here's, you know, canteen. Um, you know, at least a couple mags. You could still put a ton of mags in there. Or, you know, whatever it is that you're carrying in there. In the main compartment, um, I took out the black bag from my uh, uh, extended cold weather uh, modular sleep system. Um, so I, I didn't even try to compress that down. I just kind of stuffed that in there. Um, so who knows how much you could stuff in there. And just point being, that is certainly perfectly still large enough even though it's half the volume that it was before it's more than enough space to put in the green uh, bag the patrol bag just the light summer weight so you know if you're if you're just using it as a uh, quick out bag for the day um, you know slash assault pack you can fit a patrol bag in there you can fit rations in there you can fit mags um, and still plenty of room for some other equipment that you want to put in there. Um, you still have access to these hangers up here on the top and along the uh, top sides here. So, uh, meantime, you know, the floor, the floor has been pulled up and you can see that that isn't going anywhere. That's tied nice and tight um, and uh, it's not coming apart until you want it to come apart. And uh, when you're ready to go ahead and extend that back out and use it as a larger volume bag, like I said, all you got to do is just undo those uh, knots in the, uh, 
in the uh, uh, inside of the pack and then uh, just undo the uh, attachment straps on the side and it's ready to expand out. As you can see, it uh, is a nice comfy half size um, day pack, assault pack, uh, that you can wear as low or as high up as is comfortable for you. Now I find with this, uh, the padding that we've created is perfectly fine. I don't feel I need the plastic insert, but if that's something you really uh, want or need, uh, play around with that, see what you can do. I've also got these garden stakes I've used as an improvised uh, frame on another pack. You can certainly play around with something like that. Uh, now, some of the later Alice packs, uh, as well as the, uh, the BDU uh, Woodland Camo scheme that were made for, say, like foreign militaries sometimes, uh, they don't have the D-rings and the cords in them. Or some of the other surplus ones, they might have been cut out by a previous owner. If that's the case, you can certainly just go get at your craft store or surplus store some uh, uh, 275 cord for pretty cheap, six bucks for 100 feet, um, or just regular 550 cord. You can uh, gut it, um, whatever thickness that you like uh, for tying it. Same thing with the D rings. Um, surplus store. There's a there's a um, craft store nearby that actually has the D-rings. Uh, sometimes the surplus stores have them too. If they don't and you got to improvise something, you know, you can use something like a key ring. Just uh, use your webbing and put that in just like you would a D-ring. Get that at a you know, dollar store. Um, super cheap. Uh, certainly you can just use the webbing itself just in loops. As long as you sew it strong enough, that'll work fine. Um, and as far as if you want to try it out real quick and you don't have the equipment in there, Take some 550 or 275, tie it through the grommet holes, bring it up, tie it around the uh, the uh, uh, radio compartment uh, buckle, and draw it up, and then do the two sides, and you'll find it'll work pretty close to this if you want to try it out. Um, now, I find it's super comfy. Um, it's super great for traveling. Um, I can uh, take this on an airplane. Um, as carry-on so I don't have to pay for baggage. I can fit a couple uh, changes of clothes in there on my laptop, no problem. Fits under the seat, fits in their little box so that uh, they can't ding me on a charge. Uh, I've taken it around campus for years uh, and uh, carried my books in there and my gym clothes, no problem. Um, now, I do have to say I was inspired for this. I watched Clear and Present Danger years ago and I remember William Defoe's character, when they got out of the helicopter, they went down the creek bed. Um, and then for the rest of the movie, it looked like he had a really small uh, configured uh, Alice pack on his back. Now, looking at the movie again, looking at the pictures, maybe it was just the angle um, you can see there. Um, but uh, it at least got my mind working on the whole idea, the whole principle of doing it. Now, at the time... I think U.S. Cavalry Catalog sold a small, imported, cheap uh, Alice pack, which looked like this. It was just sewn this way at this size. Um, needless to say, I, I bought two of them in succession and destroyed them pretty quickly because uh, they just can't hold up to what a genuine Alice pack can. Uh, plus, they didn't, you know, they were in that size. They didn't expand out like this can. You can just go ahead and expand it out and put it back on the frame or whatever. Uh, you want to do. Uh, it's very uh, adaptable, um, very endurant, great stuff. Um, just play around with it. Same thing with people and all the different theories I've heard about the D-rings and the hangers. Nobody says that that's wrong. Uh, there is the specified way of, of what you do, but I mean this was a modification to that. Whatever ideas that you have uh, to utilize that equipment, this is great, lightweight, cheap, modular stuff. Absolutely do that. And if you have any suggestions for this design, Go ahead and leave them down below. I'd appreciate it. So, anyway, get your stuff out. You know, get familiar with it, play with it, and see what you can invent on it. Um, so, this is Justin in the workshop, and we'll see you next time.